Gujarat, on the west coast of India, has the largest fishing port in the country. Nearly 25,000 fishing crafts comb these shores every day, bringing in millions of tons of fish. Half a million fish workers live off this stretch of the coastline, one of the most prolific fishing grounds in India. The prime fishing season here is September to April. We set off for the western coast of India in 1996, looking for a creature that had haunted my memory for years, the whale shark. As a little boy, I had travelled from Africa to India by ship. I remember huge creatures swimming along our ship throughout the journey. Nearly 40 years after the crossing, the faint memory of these massive creatures in the warm waters of the Arabian Sea lured me to look for them once again. Whale sharks are the largest fish in the ocean. These docile giants have enormous mouths that can measure over five feet across. Yet, they feed on nothing larger than tiny plankton, krill and small schooling fish like anchovies. Sometimes as much as 60 feet in length, whale sharks can weigh over 30 tons. Shy and capable of diving to unknown depths, very little is known about these enigmatic giants. With their dorsal fin and gills, whale sharks are very much like other sharks. Yet, they are distinctly different. A solitary species that marine naturalists are still trying to fathom. The known habitat of the whale shark is off the shores of Mexico, the Honduras, Africa, Australia, the Philippines and India, mainly warm tropical waters. Their migratory patterns are uncharted, but it is believed that some travel from as far as Australia to the shores of India. We travelled all along the Gujarat shore in all seasons for three years. combing the waters, asking local fisher folk about this fish. Some spoke of the beryl, some of the buddy machali, the big fish, but we saw none. We finally found them in a small fishing village on the Swarast coast. Only this time, these creatures imprinted in my memory were not frolicking in the sea. They were being hunted. Scores of whale sharks lay on the beach, hauled in to be slaughtered. We were shocked by the sight. But for the local people, nothing seemed amiss. For them, it was just another catch. The Saurashtra region in Gujarat is one of the driest in India. Harsh, arid conditions allow little agriculture. Salt works and industries take up most parts of the coast.
coastal fishing villages are the only havens where local people can garner a living with comparative ease. Gujarat waters are rich in fish resource and in the last decade most fishing families along this coast have prospered. But the boom is receding. Recently, local fishermen have found a new source of income at the tail end of the season. Whale shark hunting has become a rampant practice here. Several fishermen have mastered the skill of capturing this mammoth fish. The most basic equipment is used for this. An iron hook, nylon rope and a couple of barrels used as buoys. The hunt is even more elemental. Fishermen risk their lives in tiny boats as they head out for their kill. With heavy hearts, we film the harpooning of one of the hundreds of whale sharks that are killed on the western coast of India every year. We wind along in a small open motorized boat for over two hours towards open sea. Twenty foot waves rose to meet us as we headed deeper. Tossed about ceaselessly by the pre-monsoon waves, we pressed on. Six kilometers into the sea, we waited for hours captive in a small open boat, scorched by the relentless summer sun. These men usually capture whale sharks as they come up to the surface to sun themselves in the afternoon heat, looking for plankton to feed on. A little past noon, a whale shark was spotted. Several boats closed in on the find. We raced along too, battling swelling waves and our emotions. We filmed the capture of this defenseless beast. Unaware that it was living its last free moments, the young whale shark basked in the warmth of the surface water, oblivious even as the fishing boats approached it. The rules of the hunt are simple. The first boat to the catch claims it. Ready with a hook, Leaning over the side, the men are quick to assault their prey. Once the shark is hooked, it shoots into the depths, dragging with it the rope attached to the barrels. The barrels are thrown off immediately, for the boat could get pulled under with a panic power dive of the fish. The injured whale shark fights the buoyant barrels until it tires. The boats prowl on the surface, waiting. Thirty minutes later, the escaping quarry tires and the barrels rise. The floater marks the position of the whale shark. The second barrel surfaces a bit later.
The diving fish is constantly pulled upwards by the floating barrels. Exhausted, the whale shark gives up the fight and eventually floats to the surface. The boats draw up to the spent creature. The tail is noosed as it struggles. The local name for whale sharks, Beryl, comes from the use of these barrels to hunt it. Secured to the boat, the worn-out captive is towed back to shore, upside down, semi-alive and struggling. The giant, tranquil spirit crushed. On our way back, we saw several other whale sharks being towed back. The size of the whale sharks caught varies from 15 foot juveniles to 35 foot giants that are as large as local trawlers. But the tiny crafts managed to haul in the massive catch. Back on shore, we found more beached whale sharks, magnificent creatures of the deep, aground. Dying forms, rocking gently as their lives ebbed with the tide. While fishermen look for potential buyers, the whale sharks are left on the beach for hours. Over the next five hours, as we watched, six other boats turned in with whale shark catches. Strangely, most fishermen hire other people to cut up their whale shark catch. The mindless slaughter perhaps goes against the grain. But the massacre continues regardless. It is only recently that whale shark meat has started fetching a price. Earlier, they were hunted for their liver oil and the carcasses were left to decay. Now, every part of the whale shark is severed and sold. This increases the incentive to hunt these huge defenseless creatures. About five years ago, a few whale sharks were hunted, mostly by the Bidya community of Gujarat, but only for the oil from their liver.
whale shark meat is not consumed anywhere in India. The meat is sold off to local merchants for export. Bile flows as the liver is pierced. Using crude tools, it takes over six hours to cut up a big whale shark. The fishermen usually keep the liver to extract the oil for themselves. Even today, the liver retains its special value for the oil. The liver accounts for roughly 10% of the total weight. Removed from the carcass, the liver is cut up and carried home by these men. Cut into strips in their backyards, the liver is put into metal barrels and left in the sun. Amazingly, there is no process required to extract the oil. Left in the barrels, over time, the liver melts into oil. This oil was originally used by fishermen to waterproof boats and sometimes sold at a very low price to shoe polish manufacturers. Today, despite alternative waterproofing material being available, this liver oil is still used for waterproofing boats and is sold for less than a dollar a litre. In the last five years, exporters along India's western coast have caught on to the demand for whale shark meat and fins in parts of Southeast Asia. Realizing its value, they have started buying the meat and fins at throwaway prices. As always, the real paradox is that the fishermen who risk their lives to capture this massive creature barely make any money. Whale shark meat is sold for a ridiculous one rupee or two cents for a kilogram. Exporters get about 40 times the amount they pay to the fishermen. Still the quantity of meat got out of a single catch makes it viable for fishermen to hunt the whale shark. In fact, this demand has created a fresh surge in the massacre of this vulnerable species. Nearly 1,200 whale sharks are killed along this coast every year. This meat is processed and packaged at local factories for export to Southeast Asia. So far, there is no ban on whale shark trade in India. Since it is not protected by the Wildlife Act of 1972, there is currently no rule in India that can stop the slaughter and trade. It is important to examine whether the commercial returns of this marine product is worth putting the species in danger. Is it crucial to the livelihood of the fishermen that hunt it? As fish catches dwindle, there is mounting pressure on coastal communities. Quick money lures even the wisest among fisherfolk to join this mindless slaughter. But even commercial viability does not justify the killing of this unique marine species. The World Conservation Union's Red List declares the status of whale sharks as indeterminate.
with no rules or guidelines to go by, the legal protection of this creature is a distant hope. It is a shame that whale sharks migrating from distant waters to frequent India's shores are being wasted in this brutal way. Instead, this ecological treasure could be promoted as a whale shark sanctuary and the commercial potential harnessed through safe tourism. The fishermen that hunt the whale shark could instead become the guardians of these waters, used as guides for visitors eager for a shark sighting or seeking the thrill of diving with these mysterious giants. If its massacre is not stemmed soon, the whale shark will become critically endangered within the next few years. The children that play on the floating carcasses of these gigantic ocean creatures may never realize that they have been witness to the waste of an extraordinary life form. Protected in most parts of the world, the whale shark is a global legacy, threatened only by man. Its survival is in our hands. <laughs>